Well, good morning everybody and welcome to St Mary's Vicarage on this Saturday the 7th <coughs> of uh, November and a very misty uh, uh, day outside today though. I believe it's going to get nice and bright this afternoon so if you are planning to go out for a walk, um, though of course you can walk in this weather, but if you are planning to go out for a walk this afternoon um, it should be a bit, uh, <coughs> a bit brighter. Um, for you to enjoy the uh, the beautiful autumnal colours. <coughs> so we sit here, uh, still uh, obviously in lockdown, uh, getting into it. Uh, I think, uh, in a sense, over the um, over the past few months, we've got pretty used to all of uh, all of this, and um, uh, the restrictions. As I went through yesterday, are a little bit different. Yesterday, uh, I think first time round, we all sort of run into our houses, lock the doors, and that was it. But we we sort of know how. Uh, a bit better how we can sort of <coughs> live with this virus under particular conditions so um uh, so there we go uh, now after this um broadcast i've got a short rehearsal uh <coughs> with a, a dwindling number of people uh for remembrance sunday uh tomorrow um we are going to be marking the act of remembrance up here by the war memorial though the Government guidelines encourage the majority of people, unless you're um, actively involved or a member of the um, armed forces, a veteran or retired and families, to uh, mark the um, Mark Remembrance Sunday at home. <clears throat> there are sheets available at the back of church if you haven't picked one up electronically um, that has been sent out. You can also download the order of service sheet from the... Um, Six Penny Handley. That's the village website. It's available on there to down uh, to download. And uh, as I say, I'm I'm hoping that um, uh, Paul Styles is going to bring up the air raid siren that he's got, and um, <clears throat> you'll hear that tomorrow at eleven o'clock, um, and that will mark the beginning of the two minute silence, and then there'll be uh, the all clear um, to mark the end of it. And hopefully, if you've got the order of service, you can follow that through. If not, um, then you can uh, just uh, uh, observe the two-minute silence. Um, unfortunately, we won't have <coughs> the scouts because of the current regulations um, that uh, we're not able to do sort of face-to-face -face contact um, scouting. So um, we were going to have a much smaller group of scouts, um, young people, two young people, one leader, but unfortunately that's not um, possible at the moment. But I know some of the senior scout leaders <coughs> will be there um, in a personal uh, capacity and um, they'll be um, laying a reef uh, on behalf of the on behalf of the scouts, uh, along with some of the <coughs> civic um, leaders and um, some people from the armed forces. Now, if you walk past the War Memorial, uh, and I can see it very clearly here from my study window, uh, you'll notice all the pebbles that have started to appear on it. This is really fantastic. Um, this is young people in the village, mainly um, scouts or um, beavers, cub scouts, explorers, have been painting these pebbles with <coughs> poppies on or uh, a motif for remembrance. Um, and they are being put on the War Memorial. So please don't worry, they are meant to be there. It's our young people's <coughs> contribution to uh, Remembrance Sunday. Now, of course, uh, like all charities uh, this year, because fundraising events haven't been able to take place, uh, our own churches uh, too have been hit hard by um, uh, not being able to fundraise. So of course, if you do want to make a one-off donation, to the church you can do so by either um, popping an envelope through the door just mark it donation and which particular church you wish it to go to whether it's uh, Pentridge, uh, Handley or St Andrews Gussage um, or you can click on the um, link that's on the parish on the church website which will take you to the um, giving scheme the online giving scheme uh, that you can use there but <clears throat> really what I want to talk about is the poppy appeal 
for the British Legion because, um, of course, they rely quite heavily on the on street collections and such like that happen over this time. And of course, now they have been told that they're not allowed to continue with that. They also do receive a considerable amount of money from collections that take place at church services because, you know, most Remembrance Sunday church services are very well attended and people are very generous. <clears throat> but of course, again, that is not happening um, this year as we can't have a church service. There won't be uh, a collection and such like. So um, the British Legion, as they, like all charities, will um, be... Uh, will be feeling that so you are able in handley you can buy poppies still down at the nisa at the shop there they are available there um uh, so do give generously there if you buy your poppy um as i say i i have a <coughs> a reusable one i don't particularly like uh, the plastic ones we have enough plastic um, but i do make a donation in the tin or several tins when i see them um, but I just like to have this knitted one. Um, but you can also make a donation online if you go to the Royal British Legion website and you can make a donation um, that way if you wish. Um, but also I think it, even though Remembrance Sunday is particularly linked to the Royal British Legion, um, there are several different service charities that you can donate to if you wish. So if you don't feel that you want to particularly donate to the Royal British Legion. Of course, the work they do is, is excellent. Um, there are several service, service charities that you can also um, donate to as well to support people who are either retired or active in the armed forces um, today. Now, Remembrance Sunday for me was always a very big thing in my previous parish at Shrivenham because we had the uh, Defence Academy of Great Britain there, which I know some people at Handley have attended. Uh, in their time and um, <clears throat> it was always a huge huge um, thing and um, uh, here too in Handley uh, it's always been an amazing thing for what is a very small village uh, I've done two here now um, having that huge procession up the high street of uh, of all our cubs <coughs> be uh, beavers cubs scouts and explorers and the leaders uh, it's just phenomenal and if you remember last year uh, the theme <clears throat> I tried, have, had tried to look at is how young people um, were affected or involved in the war. <clears throat> and um, last year we had a little bit of a focus on um, uh, uh, young people who, um, I nearly said uh, <laughs> refugees, but not refugees, young people who were evacuated, evacuees, who were evacuated from <clears throat> cities because of the Blitz and came to live in rural areas like this. So all of our scouts last year <clears throat> wore a luggage label, which was a very common thing uh, for evacuees as they went to their new families and um, homes. And um, <coughs> I was planning uh, something similar that would again, <coughs> would have enabled our young people to be able to reflect on how people of, in their age group particularly had been affected um, during uh, the war um, uh, <clears throat> and in a sense um, that's very much my parents age because my dad was a my dad was a young boy uh, during the second world war and he recounts a story he was uh, brought up in uh, Slough <clears throat> uh, and my grandfather had a wholesale business there down the Farnham Road and uh, he always recounts a story of um, uh, how he was out <coughs> down the Farnham Road playing with um, a young friend of his and um, the uh, air raid siren went off but it, it hadn't caught it in time and they heard the very um, eerie sound of a, <coughs> a, um, a flying um, flying bomb, <coughs> buzz bomb and you would hear the engine and then it would, it, it would cut out and I don't know whether it was in a sense partly fascination that young people have but um, when they heard this they tried to spot it in the sky <coughs> rather than getting to um, uh, getting themselves to cover and uh, thankfully it, it didn't land near them but it landed near enough that the explosion actually knocked them off their feet um, and uh, they were a bit grazed and, uh, and dusted down so um, <coughs> so yes so young people always affected greatly during these times as well. 
So that will be tomorrow. The service will also be streamed, uh, <coughs> live streamed, but remember that won't be at 10. We normally do these at 10. Um, the live streaming will begin <coughs> about sort of five minutes to 11 before we begin the service and the, the, the time of silence. So I hope you can join us for that. Now, um, churches <coughs> have taken the initiative of uh, what's being called um, prayer for the nation um, over the month of uh, November. If you, <coughs> excuse me, coughing a lot this morning, it's not COVID, it's my um, <coughs> allergies this morning. Um, so, um, yes, if you look at the church Facebook page, you'll see that um, the Archbishop of York, Stephen Cottrell there, um, he said a little bit about it. And this went out last night on the electronic mailing. Uh, if you're not on the electronic mailing and you'd like a copy of this, there will be copies available at the um, back of the church, or you can just go onto the Church of England website and you can download it as a, as a PDF <coughs> if you wish. <coughs> and the idea of this is that um, everybody of all faiths, um, and none in a sense, um, are being encouraged to <coughs> pray for the nation at six o'clock um, every evening. Um, and uh, the idea is in a sense that this sort of wave of prayer, uh, and even if you're um, a non-believer, uh, not a religious person, <coughs> the idea is maybe to just reflect and to meditate um, at six o'clock um, uh, for our nation. Um, and uh, just to for us to think about all that, that, that is needed and what we have in this <coughs> little download that you can have and print off, and my print has printed it back to front for some reason, <coughs> are a selection of prayers that can be used on each day which have a particular, um, particular focus. So uh, basically it, it sort of runs through like this. Uh, on Sunday we think about family, friends and loved ones. On Monday, we think about schools, colleges, children and young people. <clears throat> On Tuesday, we think about the elderly, isolated and vulnerable. On Wednesday, we think about businesses, the workplace and economic well-being. Thursday, we think about the NHS and other key workers. Friday, national and local government. <clears throat> and Saturday, all who are grieving and all suffering with physical and mental ill health. So that's the sort of pattern of prayer. And then what you have on here are suggested prayers or reflections for um, for each day. So we did a great job in the first lockdown of uh, eight o'clock all standing on our doorsteps and clapping the NHS. So maybe we can pick this up um, in November. And um, uh, as Bishop uh, Archbishop Stephen said yesterday, you know, maybe set your alarm clock on your phone or something like that at, uh, for six o'clock um, so that it buzzes. This doesn't have to take up a huge amount of time. It is literally maybe one or two minutes just pausing and reflecting. And even if you don't have the sheet, um, just saying a prayer or being still and thinking of the needs of our nation in this um, <clears throat> in this crisis. So to finish with today, as I've got to get to uh, this rehearsal, um, I thought we'd have the <coughs> prayer that's laid out for Saturday and then the actual sort of prayer for the nation that's on this sheet. For Saturday, all who are grieving and all suffering with physical and mental ill health. Lord, the one you love is ill. John chapter 11, verse 3. We bring to God all those who are suffering in body, mind, spirit, or with grief. We ask that in God's great work, loving kindness, they might know God's sustaining presence amidst their pain. We pray for those who are stretched beyond their own capacity to cope and remain hopeful that in the roar of these waterfalls, God would bring a sense of coherence, comfort and strength. Amen. <clears throat> and prayers for uh, the nation. Lord Jesus Christ, in these dark and difficult days, we turn our hearts to you. In ages past, you have delivered our nation from disaster. 
Do it again, we pray. Give wisdom beyond human wisdom to our leaders. Give strength beyond human strength to the NHS and all our frontline workers. Give comfort beyond human comfort to children and the elderly and all who grieve. Lord Jesus Christ, in these dark and difficult days, turn your face towards us. <clears throat> Have mercy upon us and heal our land, we pray. Amen. And loving God, your son Jesus Christ came with what might came that we might have life and have it abundantly. Pour out your blessings upon our nation. Where there is illness, bring your healing touch. Where there is fear, strengthen us with the knowledge of your presence. Where there is uncertainty, build us up in faith. Where there is dishonesty, lead us into truth. Where there is discord, may we know the harmony of your love. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> so please do um, download one of these or pick one up from the church. Uh, it would be really good if we could all take part in this, um, particularly at six o'clock, um, and have this wave of prayer um, for our nation um, at this time. Well, I uh, hope you have a good day. Uh, they say it's going to brighten up a little bit uh, later on. Uh, Mrs Vicarage is off to play in her potting shed. Uh, um, one of the jobs, uh, lockdown jobs that we've done is we emptied the shed. Um, when we moved in um, over two years ago now, uh, it, you know what it's like. You get to the point where you've sort of unpacked everything, or almost everything, and you've been doing it for weeks, and um, you just get to a point where you've had enough. So... We didn't really spend a lot of time on the shed. I did on the garage because that's obviously where I work and had to deal with my cars and stuff. But lots of stuff just got chucked in the shed, um, uh, paint and all sorts of things. And it, it's really just been a place to chuck things. So uh, we emptied it out together um, on um, Thursday afternoon, which was good, and give it a good clean. And uh, now Kate is um, <clears throat> able to use it for her gardening and such like, which has been a real positive thing for her during um, lockdown. As I say, anything like this is creative things that can help us with our own well-being. Um, so I know where that she'll be there today. I'll probably be marching in with a few cups of tea for her. Um, and uh, hopefully we're also going to go for a walk this afternoon. But I hope you have a good day and uh, I hope that in whatever way you can, you're able to mark uh, Remembrance Sunday uh, in the community uh, tomorrow. But let's just close with the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Do take care, folks.